What do you think? Should the Deep Cool change their greenish uh, turkeys logo into a gold one just because of the Assassin Vapor Chamber Elite? Yeah, we're going to talk about it today and I think they were listening quite a lot for, uh, from you guys and the comments and in general from the whole community because they brought to the market the black version without the LCD, without the digital screen actually and uh, it just looks brilliant. I mean, we're having Deep Cool's Assassin Vapor Chamber Elite with full black and a nice dash of gold color going through the lines here where you have to remove this cover to access the fan and the Assassin Vapor Chamber Elite lettering over here and even the logo has changed the colors. Now, of course, you can't change the color, which is now goldish compared to the last time it was turquoise, but regardless of that, this cooler looks outstanding. And we're gonna deep dive into this one because, well, basically it's uh, almost the same thing as the Wipe Chamber we had with the digital screen, but just want to go through some details first. So what you can expect here, we're having compatibility with the Intel sockets up to LGA 1851 and AMD AM5 and AM4, Dimensions are 144, 147, 164, where the heatsink is 140, 110, 160. The net weight of the cooler is almost 2 kilos, so we're talking about 1,772 grams. We're having 7 heat pipes with 6 millimeters diameter, and the fan dimensions go, well, basically you have two fans, one in the middle and one at the rear, 140, 140, 25, that one, that one is in the middle, and 120, 120, 25, which is at the rear. Now, fan speed, in performance mode, you get 500 to 1,800 RPMs for the 141, 120 goes from 500 to 1700 RPMs. The fan airflow in performance mode is 61.25 CFM and the 121 is 58.06 and the noise level is up to, not above, 29.3 decibels. When we go in the quiet mode, the RPMs go for 140 up to 1450 and for 120, 1350. Airflow is 48.55 uh, and 46.75 and the noise level is remarkable 22.6 decibels. You have a PWM 4-pin splitter that you connect both fans to it, fluid dynamic bearing and that's basically it when we're talking about the specifications. So this is quite cool, I do have to admit because if you don't need extreme performance, you're still getting a outstanding cooling with vapor chamber, but you lower down the noise level to 22.6 decibels, a quiet, dead silent build. Now, in this case, it performed differently compared to the last time because, well, first and foremost, this case isn't designed in terms of having a, let's say, not a proper airflow, but a proper directional airflow in terms of having an intake exhaust and similar stuff like that. So what we have right here is the Assassin Vapor Chamber Elite cooling down the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D, two exhaust fans here at the top, and uh, basically the GPU is taking up the whole bottom part, but you don't have the possibility to place fans here at the bottom because there are no possibilities. You don't have any openings to push out screws through it. So there's that, only the GPU goes at the bottom which is quite close to the bottom part, so it takes the air intake from the bottom and, well, the back side, it all depends. I mean, the fan, the last fan from the Assassin Vapor Chamber Elite is quite close to the back, so you could add a fan or you don't have to, it's all up to you, of course. Now, because of this scenario, we're not getting a full potential out of the Assassin Vapor Chamber Elite. Because let's go and deep dive into this. When we go with AIDA64 Extreme Edition, the CPU goes up to 91 degrees. In the original review that I tested out the Assassin 4 Vapor Chamber, we got 5 degrees lower. In scenario of the clock speed, in this build we get 4775 MHz, but in that build we had 4725. So we get a bit higher clock speed, but only in AIDA64, because when we move forward with Cinebench R23, with this build, I get 81.5 degrees on the CPU, comparing it to 78.7, so that's almost 3 degrees lower in that regular build, regular intake, regular exhaust, everything is just normal and the proper airflow. Then we go further with clock speed, 4903 compared to 4948, so what you can expect right here is better performance and this shows in the score because with in this scenario 
I get 26,050 Cinebench points, while in that other Assassin 4 Vapor Chamber, I get 26,496. So, what we got here is a performance of a cooler that definitely performs good in this type of case. It performs definitely better if you place any other air cooler inside this type of case because you won't be getting this type of performance. Because of the vapor chamber, because of the 7 heat pipe, 6 millimeter diameter, because of these two fans running at performance quiet mode, you can modify that as you wish, and a nice clean design. But if you use any other, well, any other, any other air cooler that fits inside here, you won't get that much performance out of it. So if we used this air cooler, now I'm giving some expectations, uh, in a proper midi tower chassis that has a proper intake, exhaust and everything all together, you will most likely hit around 26,400, 500 Cinebench points. And that's basically it. I mean, that's what we're aiming for, a proper performance and an air cooler that beats a 360 AAO. So it's it's simple as that. Now, what I wanted to move forward is the, the process of installation is really straightforward. The first step is to remove the original retention brackets from the AMD motherboard. The second step is to place four uh, spacers, which are almost the same as thumb screws. You just need to tie them up to the original place where the retention brackets were. You have two retention brackets that you need to place on top of those and four thumb screws to lock them in place. After that, you need to remove the middle fan, use their screwdriver that is placed inside the box and tie up the air cooler to the CPU and the motherboard. Of, of course, in the meantime, don't forget to remove the plastic sticker from the cold plate and don't forget to apply thermal paste. Quite logical, right? Now, all in all, as I said, this build looks brilliant in general when we take everything into consideration, the compactness because we have CH160+, plus, we have the PN850M and we're having a full deep cool build which does look outstanding. The performance can be better and I definitely uh, have to say that in a proper airflow case, I'm going to mention that again, uh, in a proper airflow case this air cooler shines and definitely one of the best air coolers that I tested uh, on the market currently without a doubt. So guys, if you're aiming for a performance air cooler that is, well, honestly going in a bigger case that has better intake, better exhaust and similar stuff like that, you definitely should go with this because, well, we have a vapor chamber, we have all of that that I mentioned and a cool design. I think loads of you guys will definitely enjoy the visual aspect of this cooler because of the black and the gold and the whole combination and the gold isn't that tacky and that's the important part. Now one more thing if you wish to add another fan you can because you get a bracket inside the box with four screws that can be placed uh, on the front giving you a triple fan configuration which is quite outstanding I do have to admit giving you uh, more possibilities for a uh, even more forceful airflow through the passive heatsink of the air cooler and that will be all for today guys. I think there's uh, nothing left to add compared to the past review even though that one had the digital screen and this one is uh, Vapor Chamber Elite so it kind of brings something a bit new to the table and definitely a solid performance. I'm not going to repeat myself. So guys the link for the Deepcool Assassin Vapor Chamber Elite is in the description below and well Basically, if you like the content and you like this cooler, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell for future content coming quite shortly. Thanks for sticking by.